हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. Questions 1 to 5 are based on the following conversation. Oh, hi Dave. Long time no see. Hi Maria. I just settled down. I thought I'd drop by. Come on in. Take a seat. Would you like anything to drink? I have Sprite and orange juice. Sprite would be fine. Oh, so how have you been? Oh, not bad. And you? Oh, I'm doing okay, but school has been really busy these days, and I haven't had time to relax. By the way, what's your major? Hotel management. Well, What do you want to do once you graduate? Um I haven't decided for sure, but I think I'd like to work for a hotel or travel agency in this area. How about you? Well, when I first started college, I wanted to major in French, but I realized I might have a hard time finding a job using the language. So I changed my major to computer science. With the right skills, landing a job in the computer industry shouldn't be too difficult. So, do you have a part-time job to support yourself through school? Well, fortunately for me, I received a four-year academic scholarship that pays for all of my tuition and books. Wow, that's great. Yeah, how about you? Are you working your way through school? Yeah, I work 3 times a week at a restaurant near campus. Oh, what do you do there? I'm a cook. How do you like your job? It's okay. The other workers are friendly and the pay isn't bad. Now you have a chance to read questions 6 to 10. Several days later, Dave and Maria met on campus. So what do you want to do tomorrow? Well, let's look at this city guide here. Um, here's something interesting. Why don't we first visit the art museum in the morning? Okay, I like that idea. And um, where do you want to have lunch? How about going to an Indian restaurant? The guide recommends one downtown, a few blocks from the museum. Now that sounds great. After that, what do you think about visiting the zoo? Well, it says here that there are some very unique animals not found anywhere else. Well, to tell the truth, I'm not really interested in going there. Yeah, why don't we go shopping instead? There are supposed to be some really nice places to pick up souvenirs. No, I don't think that's a good idea. We only have a few travelers checks left and I only have $50 left in cash. No problem. We can use your credit card to pay for my clothes. Oh no. I remember the last time you used my credit card for your purchases. Oh well. Let's take the subway down to the seashore and walk along the beach. Now that sounds like a wonderful plan. That is the end of part 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part two. You are going to hear part of a lecture on some useful information for your travelling around Britain. Good afternoon, and welcome to the session on Britain. This afternoon, I would like to provide some useful information for you about travelling around Britain. Britain has over 700 tourist information centres. You will find them at major ports, airports, stations, historic landmarks and towns, and holiday centres. So just look out for this sign that says Tourist Information. The staff will be able to answer your holiday queries, as well as provide essential maps, guides and brochures. Tourist information centres at major ports and airports in London and addresses of British Tourist Authority European offices are all listed on the tourist information centres. Now, let's talk about the telephone in Britain. You know, Britain is well supplied with public telephones. Street kiosks take lop coins. In city centres, mainline railway stations, airports and central London underground stations, payphones and card phones are in operation. For the latter, small plastic phone cards are used and these come in 10, 20, 40, 100 and 200 units and can be bought at post offices, news kiosks, station bars and shops where the green and white card phone sign is displayed. Now you have a chance to read questions When using the different public telephone systems, make sure you read the dialing instructions carefully. Now let's see the banks in Britain. There are 24-hour banks at London's two main airports. One is Heathrow and the other is Gatwick. Otherwise, banks are normally open from 9.30 to 3.30, Monday to Friday. Barclays Bank and National Westminster Bank offer a Saturday morning service at some of their branches. National Gyro Banks has 42 bureaux de change located in post offices throughout the country in main tourist areas. Opening hours are 9 to 5.30 weekdays, 9 to 12.30 Saturday mornings. One exception to this is the Trafalgar Square office, whose opening hours are 8 to 8 weekdays and Saturdays, and 10 to 5 on Sundays. The bureaux de change services are available to overseas visitors. Visitors can change their money there. You can also change money at Bureau de Change, large hotels, department stores and travel agents. Be sure to check in advance the rate of exchange and the commission charged, as these vary considerably. Wherever possible, you are advised to use the bank or Bureau de Change, which conforms to the BTA Code of Conduct. In most cases, this is indicated by display of the code. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear two students called Justin and Myra discussing a project they have to do as part of their design course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hi, Myra. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Justin. It's fine. I've been reading through my notes for this project. OK. So, we have to design something. An object that could be sold in the shops. Yeah, and set out the project plan for it. The marketing and so on. Yes. I was thinking, what about designing a new type of musical instrument? You know, most people like music and I've played music all my life. Yes, we both have. But we also know that a lot of music is done on computers now. Mm, but many people don't like that, do they? They think it's cheating. I mean, I do, really. Mm, I completely agree. <laughs> but we'd have to come up with a totally different type of instrument. And I'm not sure we could do that. Hmm, I know what you mean. Hmm. What about something for children to play? They like making sounds to music. You mean using cheap things like bells and drums? Hmm, not necessarily. We could try to invent a simple stringed instrument, for example. But even if we did that, it wouldn't appeal to that many people. Our customer base would be tiny, I think. Oh, maybe you're right. It's a pity, but, um... You know what you were saying about children? Yes. Well, I do think it would be good to get into that market. How about designing a children's toy? Ah, oh, now that's a better idea. Though people do get tired of seeing so many different toys in the shops. Yeah, there are so many these days. People go, not another new toy. <laughs> it's a good market, though. Hmm. Parents and grandparents buy toys for presents, for birthdays, whatever. Yeah, it must be such a profitable area of business. And they can be very simple and cheap to produce, but expensive to buy. Yes, and we both have very young siblings. We're surrounded by toys, in fact. So we should find the creative side of it quite easy. Well, we'll see, won't we? Is that decided then? Yes, I think so. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. OK, so now we need to agree a project plan. We need to discuss the stages in the design of the toy. Hmm. Why don't we draw a table? And then we can divide the tasks between us. That's a good idea. OK, so where shall we start? Well, first of all, we need to find out what sort of toys children really enjoy playing with. I know. My little brother's having a birthday party next week, so I could take him to it and have a chat with some of the parents while I'm there. Yes. You'll need to have a few informal questions in mind. I can do that. I can draft a few questions and take them with me. I could actually produce a more formal short questionnaire and give it to the staff at the nursery my sister goes to. That's an excellent idea. Mm. That should really help us decide what to focus on. Once we know what we're going to produce, we'll have to think about the actual design, as we need to produce a model, don't we? Yes. Well, I'd be very happy to get together a lot of different materials from shops and places around the area. I mean, a lot of toys are made using plastic, but we would have to use something else. Right. And I can put together a 3D model, if you like. I could do it in cardboard. OK. As far as making the toy is concerned, we're going to be given some help there, aren't we? Yes, I don't think we have to worry too much about that at the moment. But we do need to think about the advertising side of things. I think the best thing would be to design a commercial. For radio or TV? TV, I think. It's hard to demonstrate a toy on the radio. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay. We'd need to come up with the different scenes that will take place during the commercial. Yes, we could discuss those first, and then I could write it all up as a script. It'll have to be very detailed, so you need to include absolutely everything. Okay. Well, you may have to help me out with that at some point. That's fine. It's a big job. What else can we do? Well, what about a poster? Uh huh. It's a fairly traditional form of advertising. I guess the important thing will be that people notice it, and it gives them the idea straight away. Yes, it has to catch people's eye in some way. Well, the critical thing is that it's colourful. Colour is something that people associate with children and toys, and that's how it'll get noticed. I completely agree. A lot of posters are black and white these days, and that just wouldn't be effective. So, shall we fix a date to review our plan and get started? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear part of a lecture about the psychology of personality. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to this lecture on the psychology of personality. Today I'll introduce the main theories of personality, but first let's discuss what is meant by the term. A brief definition is that personality is made up of the individual patterns of thoughts, feelings and behaviours that make a person unique. Our environment and the situations we encounter also play an important role in determining how different aspects of our personalities are expressed. There are several fundamental characteristics of personality. Personality is a constant phenomenon. People tend to react in the same way when they come across similar situations. For example, no matter how great our desire not to feel angry when we're woken up in the early hours by a car alarm or our neighbour plays his music at full volume, our immediate emotional response will usually be the same. Personality influences our actions too and causes us to behave in specific ways. If a kid keeps bouncing his ball against the wall outside, unless we make a determined effort to behave differently, we'll probably end up yelling at him in frustration every time, rather than asking him calmly not to do it. Personality is shaped by both psychological and biological factors, and is expressed not only in behaviours, but through emotions and thoughts, which have an impact on our relationships and social behaviour. What do we mean by behaviour, then? Well, it's how each individual reacts to the social and physical aspects of their environment. We all know people who seem a bit buttoned up, who don't appear to express strong feelings such as joy or anxiety, whereas another person's responses might be dramatically coloured with facial expression, gesture and voice inflection. When psychologists examine behaviour, they do so in different ways. Some theorists believe that the internal characteristics of a person dictate their behavioural pattern, whereas others hold that the behaviour of a person is a result of the external situation in which they find themselves. 
Of course, the way we present ourselves to the world and the way we are in private can be significantly different. How the world perceives us is a direct reflection of how we present ourselves to the world. Qualities over which we have little influence include our age, race and gender. But they certainly contribute to our personality because of how the world perceives us based on these features. The way we are treated can, in turn, affect our behaviour. For example, a person who continuously faces discrimination because of assumptions society makes about him or her may guard against this by coming across as cold or unfriendly. However, should we get to know him or her, we may discover a completely different person inside. Physical attributes, which develop over time, also contribute to personality and include mannerisms such as speaking softly or loudly, the way we walk, eye contact and so on. If we speak quietly, for example, it's likely we'll be dubbed shy, whereas those with louder voices might be labelled extrovert, though in reality the opposite may be true. If we walk slowly, we might be perceived as relaxed, and in some cultures, if we don't look people in the eyes, they might think we're rude. How we want the world to perceive us influences how we present ourselves to others. Characteristics such as attitude, response and general mindset create the surface of our individual personality. Attitude includes characteristics like friendliness or being standoffish. Response is whether we're arrogant or thoughtful and mindset concerns whether we're generally upbeat or moody, all of which hang together to create who we are. Remember, however, that the aspects of our personality that we choose to display may depend on who we encounter. The personality you exhibit around me, a professor, for example, is probably very different to the personality you reveal to your closest friends. Dig a little deeper and the private aspect of our being appears. Our cherished dreams that might seem childish to others, our goals and the moral code we live by. Our ideas, daily internal monologue and thoughts are also elements that make up the person that only we truly know. And only we can decide when to share these parts of our personality with others. Let's move on now to the different theories of personality. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking QCAD guesswork. Please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired dance score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my Telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.